now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his fiancé, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Gathering Storm. Dr. Chronopolis? Sir? Are you in here? Who's that? Is someone there? I'll call the guard. It is the guard. What is Dr. Chronopolis, it's me, Tom. Oh, dear boy. I beg your pardon. I'll be down in just one moment. Jeez, Dr. C, what is all this stuff? Hmm? Oh, just a little uh, project of mine, dear boy. There's nothing little about this. That's a heck of a machine. Yes, well, I, I admit its size is impressive. Its efficacy has been rather less so, I'm afraid. But what the heck is it? Oh, Well, not to bore you with technical details, but I've been testing some specimens I recovered on a recent expedition, a rather intriguing find from an Aztec temple. The piece bears all the characteristic markings of some of the most powerful mystic artifacts in the museum's collection, but it seems devoid of any of the typical energies. I don't understand. Well, here, you can see the artifact itself. Just here at the focal point of this waveform generator. This, uh, shield thing? If you like. I've been bombarding it with energies and known mystical frequencies for weeks now to try and activate or unlock it in some way. But so far without the slightest success. Mystical frequencies? Uh, Yes. Well, if you prefer, you might say... Energies that were used in the ancient world that are only now beginning to be understood by modern scientists. They are? Well, some of us. Or me, anyway. On a good day. But here, I I am prattling on. Would you care to sit down? I'm sure I can clear some space. Somewhere. Oh, Doc, it's all right. I've got to go back on duty. I just came to let you know that this package arrived for you. A package? In the middle of the night? It's two in the afternoon, Doc. Really? Oh, my. (laughs) You should really look out a window sometimes. I suppose you're right, my boy. I suppose you're right. Uh, But who has the time? Who is this package from, then? Uh, The way Bill says, Dr. Emil Borgen, University... Ah, Emil. Good old Emil. He's still off somewhere in the Far East, no doubt. Always bouncing all over the world. (laughs) Let's get this open. Here's a letter. Oh. Tom, my boy, would you be so kind? My reading glasses are up at the top of that tower. Sure thing, Doc. If you think it's all right. My dear Theo, hope you are doing well and that your mad experiments haven't blown that museum of yours sky high just yet. Ahem. <clears throat> mad indeed. He should talk. Oh, my. Well, you look at this lovely stone. What an interesting shade of... Oh, my. It seems to be changing color all the time. What else does he say? What about this stone? Um, have sent along this curiosity for testing. The local legend says in ancient times it was used to control the weather, though if that ever was so, they certainly don't remember how it's used. Hmm. Thought I'd let you work your voodoo on it and see if it has any mystic properties that might be unlocked. There's a terrible drought here, and if there's any chance this could help these people, I'd like to know. Yours truly, Emil. Interesting. Well, this should be simple enough matter. Uh, Tom, hand me my mystical energy detector. What? I don't... uh... Oh, uh, the big boxy device with the lights and, and things... Yes, yes, that one. You're telling me that this detects magic? If there's any to be found, yes. Just switch it on and... Oh, oh my. Yes, there's a very strong level of background magics around this stone. And and this table. And this floor. And you, Tom. Me? 
and me, and and everywhere. This shouldn't be possible. Is there any danger? Should we evacuate the museum? I don't think just yet, but I should probably make a telephone call. Excuse me. Sure, sure thing, Doc. Yes, this is Dr. Chronopolis at the museum. I have a situation here. Please notify the Red Panda. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you know if this bus turns on King? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, it certainly is gray today, isn't it? Not like yesterday, that's for sure. I I'm sorry, I didn't quite... Uh, um, I, I didn't quite catch that. Do, do you think it will rain later? What is this place? What? Uh, what did you say? What is this place? This? Uh, this is Bathurst Street. Bathurst Street? Are, are you all right? What manner of place is this? I, I don't think I understand. You're at a bus stop in Toronto? Toronto? Mr. Listen, my sister's a nurse. Maybe I should call her for you. <sighs> okay, uh, maybe I should just... I can't really even see you under that hood. Let me just... Uh... <sighs> No, y your face! You, you can't be! You can't! Somebody help! Anybody! Well might you scream, weak creature of flesh, for we are coming. The army of the great darkness is assembling at last, and soon this Toron Toe will... Wither before our might. Fall before the Drax sights. Well, for what it's worth, Dr. Chronopolis, I've been able to confirm your own findings. The mystical energy detector you built for me is producing the same results. A constant background level of unusual magics? Yes, and not just in this room but for several miles around, at the very least. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Unless both of our trackers are malfunctioning. Not a very strong likelihood, Red Panda. Uh, something in the neighborhood of being struck by two bolts of lightning at the same time. But, Doctor, what does it mean? That's what worries me, Red Panda. I simply don't know. Do you think this machine of yours is the culprit? I shouldn't have thought so. I was very careful in constructing a narrow focal point for the waveform generator. Besides, I've been using this sort of technology for months with no unusual effects. Magic is like any other form of energy. Left unsupported by a source, it should dissipate rapidly. But what about artifacts that retain their mystic properties for years, even centuries? Generally, they are, by their very nature. Either some form of battery which retains the power within themselves, or a conduit, an open door, if you will, between this dimension and another allowing power to flow through within a limited range. My machine is... is just a machine. I've turned it off. I've detached the main coil. It can't be the cause of this power build-up. And yet it strikes me as quite a coincidence, Doctor. Oh, dear, I've been such a fool. Meddling in powers I don't fully comprehend. And without that sort of meddling, Doctor, no one ever would understand these powers fully. Your work will one day benefit all mankind. If I don't destroy them first... Yes, well, there is that. Ah, oh, dear. Look, there's no reason to believe there's any danger at present. If it'll make you feel better, I can take some field readings from the autogyro, try and get a sense of how large this phenomenon is, and if the museum really is the focal point at all. Thank you, Red Panda. I'd appreciate that. And I'll run some tests, uh, see if I can come up with a theory for dissipating the energy field. Oh, dear. That's your radio ring, isn't it? Excuse me, Doctor. Red Panda here. Go ahead, Squirrel. Say, boss, you didn't happen to notice that it's awful dark for this time of day, did you? 
Uh, I saw some storm clouds moving in. The street lights are on. That is odd, but I get the feeling it's not why you called me. Not exactly. You didn't have to order a small army of guys with hoods and snake faces, did you? What? No. Then maybe you'd like to get your fanny down here and help me send these freaks back to where they came from. Get her, my brothers. Do not let her get away. I bet you say that to all the girls. Masha. Where did she go? She is barely a shadow before my eyes. There, climbing that wall. Impossible. I specialize in the impossible, or hadn't you boys heard? You cannot resist us, little one. We like ourselves, don't we? With those ugly faces, I bet every girl in town can resist you just fine. Imputed whelp! You will be food for the master's great feast. Not likely, tall, dark, and scaly. You're talking to the wall, but I'm over here now. How can she hide before the eyes of the Draxites? We who were created in a world of shame. Made to bring darkness upon the earth. The living darkness of our great master. Is this your resume, or are we supposed to be fighting? Get her, you fools! But, brother, we cannot fight what we can barely see. Yeah, and about that, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you freaks are mostly made of magic. What do you know of such things? I know I'm just about invisible to magic. For reasons I'd just as soon not explain if it's all the same to you. Lies! Okay, I'm not even going to respond to that one. I'm going to let you just think about what you just said. For one thing, you're talking to where I was two minutes ago. I'm going to take another guess that you kittens have some kind of psychic link. The matter I get you, the more you come out of the woodwork. Yes! And you cannot hide from all of us! I don't need all of you, pumpkin. But this, 12, 13, 14, that ought to be enough to collect some decent data. What is this? Let's start you boys off with an oldie but a goodie. Knockout gas. <laughs> Your puny attacks have, have no, no effect, effect on the mighty snake face and his all-girl orchestra. I got it. Let's try a stun net. <laughs> hmm. Perhaps the direct approach. Who wants to take a boomerang for the team? Weak, puny female. We have a winner. <sighs> Darn it. We must have an awful thick head. Any of you boys got any suggestions? I suspected as much. You cannot defeat the Draxites. We are protected by magics you cannot understand. Shielded from any attack your ephemeral world can create. Protected by magic, huh? See, this is why you never explain your powers to... Never mind. She is here! In our midst! Destroy her! Any of you boys know what these are? No, oh, don't all hiss at once. I know they look like just an ordinary pair of brass knuckles, such as any refined young lady might carry. But these are made of a special magic-resistant alloy. And if I'm right, it means when I hit you, and I will hit you, they do this! What did you do? Impossible! Holy Hannah! I never punched somebody so hard they vaporized before. I like it! Who's next? Seize her. Capture her weapon. Yeah, yeah. Step right up. Got some for you. And for you. And here's yours. Oh, yeah. Now that's what I call science. I'll alert the Nobel Committee immediately. What are you doing up there? Watching you work. Oh, yes. Do you have notes or something? No, I'm just enjoying the fact that I don't have to watch you when I think you're not looking anymore. Oh. Well, if you're going to be like that, you're out of the doghouse. Get down here. 
I'm not sure we have time for me to be properly out of the doghouse just yet. What are you talking about? Do you see any more snake men around here? There are police reports of them spreading terror across the city. Oh. But this alley is pretty clear, right? Behave yourself just a little longer. Ten months is not just a little longer. That was some good work, finding the weakness of these Draxites. Even if it was a dangerous piece of guesswork. Guesswork, schmesswork. They keep giving out free passes. They were created in a world of shades and made to bring darkness on this earth. So if their great master gave them magic shields, they probably wouldn't need much else. Unless they met a girl with these sweet babies. I wondered if we'd ever get a chance to use them. Come on. In this job, you knew I'd get a Decademon eventually. Well, you might yet get your chance. If this ties in with Dr. Chronopolis's findings, this could be just the beginning. Swell. I could use the workout. This could be the start of a full-scale invasion from a magic dimension. If we have a breach on our hands... Are you suggesting that I can't punch an entire dimension into submission? I'm suggesting that we're about to need all the help we can get our hands on. The city, and perhaps the entire world, depends upon it. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Red Panda to Flying Squirrel. Come in, Flying Squirrel. Boss? Now I'm having trouble reading you over the interference from the storm. How's the auto gyro holding up to the weather? So far, so good. Though she really wasn't designed for these kind of rough conditions. I find it hard to believe this storm is unrelated to our more pressing problems. How are things at your end? I've got nine agents and am proceeding with plan B. Only nine? We've got snake men popping up all over the city. Communications has been hit pretty hard. Most of them are troubleshooting and unreachable. We'll have to work on that. Yeah. Next invasion from another dimension, we'll be more prepared. You learn anything up there? Only that it's worse than we thought. Why am I not surprised? Send word to Dr. Chronopolis. Tell him as far as I can tell, the museum is the epicenter of the disturbance. As far as you can tell, what does that mean? It means that in the time it took me to fly from one end of the mystic energy field to another, it had expanded by over 20 miles. 20 miles? That's bad. But the rate of expansion seems consistent with the museum as a focal point. It's a little hard to do the calculations in my head just now. Just keep that bird in the air. Do your math homework later. (laughs) Yes, boss. You watch your back down there. I've got nine strapping young agents to do that for me, don't you worry. I'm going to need more help than that before we're through. Well, you can make the call when you get back to the landing pad at the lair. I'm about to have my hands full here. Roger that. Be careful, Squirrel. Back at you. Flying Squirrel over and out. Here she comes, boys. What did the chief have to say? He said, be sure to tell Mac Tully to stop asking so many fool questions. (laughs) Serves me right for asking, I guess. Glad you're finally seeing things my way. All right, you jokers, listen up. What are we doing here, Squirrel? All hex busting loose all over the city, and you got us hiding out in a warehouse. Eddie, what do you think the odds are that I decided to ride this one out in a warehouse? Uh... Bearing in mind that any other answer but not very likely is going to get your nose broken... Not very likely. Smart boy. We've got dimensional gate crashers all over the city, boys. They don't seem to know quite what to do with themselves. If this is an invasion, it's a pretty badly planned one. But they're spread in panic, and if the boss is right, not without reason. Snake face is notwithstanding. In a nutshell. I tried taking on one of these characters. They got heads like iron. I couldn't put a dent in one, and I barely got out of there in one piece. And that was one. There's a small army of them out there. And getting larger by the minute while you're yakking. These snake men, or Draxites, they got one big advantage. A built-in magic shield that shrugs off just about any ordinance we can throw at them. Oh, swell. Is that all? We got a few things working for us, though. One, these jokers don't seem to have a plan. If the boss's guesswork is as good as usual, they've been pulled through by some kind of accident doesn't help us that much now that they're here. No, it doesn't. But we got advantage number two. 
If you can get past the shields, they don't have much else going for them. Whoever created them didn't expect them to run up against anybody who had advantage number three. Which is? A special alloy Dr. C came up with that busts through magic like a hot knife through butter. I did some dirty work with these little beauties. Brass knuckles? Anti-magic brass knuckles, Mr. Tully. And I've added some toe caps on the boots to speed things up. We can't punch and kick our way through a thousand snake men. Maybe you can't, precious. That's why we've got these. Ammunition? Crates of it. What good are bullets against these monsters? Anti-magic bullets, Mr. Tully. Every single one of them tipped with the same magic-resistant alloy. These should cut right through their shields and send the three guys behind them back to where they came from. Or wherever snake men from another dimension go to when you blow their heads off. Actually, they vaporize. But otherwise, that's more or less right, yeah. I ain't partial to firearms, but in this case, I'm prepared to make a big exception. At least, till we can work out something more stylish. How did you get these made so fast? We've been sitting on them for a while now for just such an emergency. You didn't think the Red Panda would ask you to fight monsters with sticks and stones, did ya? But there's only nine of us. How are we supposed to cover the whole city at once? And that's our final advantage, boys. Joe, you want to open those big doors? See, our drag sites have a mental link. When they run into trouble, more come running. <laughs> Uh-huh. Here comes a handsome pair right on cue. Uh, you who? Are you sailors in town from another dimension? Puny human! You dare to taunt the Draxites? Yep. Me and these little old twin 45s, that's just what we dare. Destroy her! Here they come. Squirrel, what now? Now? Watch me test the theory, boys. <laughs> You got one! What have you done? How? What are you waiting for? Blast him! Gotta leave one to yell for help, Eddie. Here come four more. I got six over here. Look lively, lads. They keep coming. There must be a hundred of them. Reload fast. Matt, be a gear and grab that Tommy gun, would ya? Roger that. I got it. Hang on. Let her rip. We've got to keep these freaks busy while the boss makes his play. Yeah? What's that? I'm sure he'll think of something. Really? Uh, I'm pretty sure. You got something else to do? No, ma'am. Anytime, Mac. Got it. All right, snake men. Come and get your red hot. Dr. Konopolis. Doctor, are you here? Over here, Red Panda. Doctor, did you get my message? Yes, dear boy. And I'm afraid things are getting worse by the moment. They certainly are. We need to stop this breach at the source, Doctor, and do it fast. The Flying Squirrel and her team can't hold out indefinitely. But, Red Panda... Whatever this device of yours has done, we must reverse it immediately. I'm afraid my machine is not the source of the problem, Red Panda. But, Doctor... Oh, I don't deny something about the process caused the dimensional breach in the first place. But look here. This shield? Is this the Aztec artifact you were testing? Yes, without results, or so I thought... But as the breach has widened, the energy emissions from the shield have become unmistakable. Feel the heat radiating from it. Doctor, the power building within this must be enormous. Which suggests whatever is beyond the breach is infinitely more powerful than these... these Draxites. If it should get through... It can't. It mustn't. Doctor, how do we reverse the process? I, I don't know. Doctor, millions of lives may hang in the balance... You were bombarding the shield with mystical energy. If we directed a beam of opposing force... But, Red Panda, I've been rotating harmonic frequencies for weeks. I've no way of knowing which one triggered the breach. It could take days of guesswork, and the odds are good that I would only make it worse. Doctor, you have to try. There are forces on a cosmic scale at work, and only science can stand in their way. Science beyond the limits of human comprehension is magic, my friend. Or had you forgotten? The stranger. Oh, my. Who is this? Can it be? Dr. Chronopolis, this is an old friend. The stranger... The master of magic. You were in the Society of Gentlemen Adventurers. Why, when I was a lad... Oh, dear me, where are my manners? I'm afraid we don't have much time for social graces just now, my dear doctor. You got my message, then. Indeed, and not a moment too soon. Up to your ears in Draxites, I hear. You know them? It's been a while, but yes. 
Pawns in a game you want no part of, believe me. How do we stop it? That rather depends upon how you started it. With this. Is that... Great heavens. The shield of Zakros. Well, this has been lost for centuries. But how did you... This should never have caused a breach in the dimensional wall. Indeed, it was forged to guard against just such an effect. Yes. Well, it's my fault, I'm afraid. In an effort to understand it, I was testing it against a number of mystic frequencies. Uh, with this, it generates energy waveforms on known magical vibrations. Red Panda, I begin to understand where some of your remarkable anti-magic devices come from. If you could keep that to yourself, old friend, I'd be obliged. Secrets are best when shared. And I admit I have envied that science in the work that has pulled me from retirement, keeping at bay the dark forces arising in Europe. Those that originate beyond this world, at any rate. But this is, well, this is rather worse than I had feared. Can you use your power to help seal the breach? I can try. The correct spell, or mystic frequency, as your doctor might say, is easy enough to deduce. But the strength of the opposing power... To counter that would take... Yes. Well, I'll do what I can. You mean... You take care of that assistant of yours, would you? Stranger, I... I will. Good luck. Wait. There is no time I must begin. B wait, please. Can you create an energy field on the correct frequency, on a small scale? Of course, but we're far beyond... Please, let me get the main coil hooked up again. Doctor, what is it? If the stranger can create a, a spell that would seal a smaller breach, I can replicate the mystic vibrations and amplify them through my machine... Focus back on a shield at a vastly amplified power. That could be enough to seal the breach, dispel most of the remaining Draxites, and prevent the rise of their master. Well, why are you both looking at me? Do it! Are you ready, Doctor? Ready, stranger. Now! Matching frequencies? Got it! Firing! Maxwell Falcone. You're a sight for sore eyes. I knew when those baddies disappeared that you must have come calling. Ah, my dear flying squirrel. Well. What's that? I do try not to read people's thoughts without their permission. But uh, mine are too obvious to miss. Congratulations, my dear. It's about bloody time. No fooling. Is everything all right over there? Just peachy, thanks. Good work, Squirrel. Are our people... Everybody's fine, more or less. But it's kind of a mess, isn't it? Anti-magic bullets everywhere. Anti-magic bullets? I never thought I'd see the day when science began to catch up to the ancient secrets... Your Dr. Chronopolis is a remarkable man. I might need to borrow him from time to time, if you don't mind. I'm sure he'd be thrilled. He was quite starstruck. I thought he was going to ask for your autograph. But didn't he... Oh, that's right. The doc was out cold the last time you saved his bacon, wasn't he? He won't make that mistake again. Take my advice, old friend. Clean up these bullets and keep them as secret as you can. The forces I'm working against in Europe must not learn of them and be able to prepare. Then you think things are going to get bad? For millions, my dear, it already is. There are those within the ranks of power in Germany who think nothing of invoking great otherworldly power, forces of enormous evil, to aid them in their mad quest for power in this world. A handful of us stand against them, but should we fail, it's only a matter of time before the whole world will become entangled in a conflict such as mankind has never known. When you need us, Max. Your time will come. But since Dr. Chronopolis has made me this handsome gift... Pretty fancy shield. Looks old. It is. 
The shield of Zakros was forged to defend this world against incursions from the next. With its power to augment my own, freedom may yet have a fighting chance. Goodbye, my friend. And when freedom needs a couple of masked marvels with a warehouse full of anti-magic bullets... We'll be ready, Kit. The Red Panda swears it. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 40, The Gathering Storm, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Stephen Burley, Peter Nickel, Kevin Robinson, Monica Cote, Peter Higginson, Clarissa Donetta Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>